Time now for The Real Estate Connection with Stephen Fayard, a realtor and certified probate and real estate specialist. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or a seasoned investor looking to downsize, move up, or refinance, this program is for you. Our house in the middle of our street. Our house. In the middle of our From probate sales to landscape design to home repairs and maintenance, this is your weekly look into all things real estate. Now your host for the Real Estate Connection, Stephen Fayard. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Connection, brought to you by Good Patriot Realty, a salute to home ownership. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me on today's show. I really do appreciate y'all coming out. Um, it is going to be lit. And where is my fire? Yeah, lit. We are on fire. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you again for joining me on another episode of The Real Estate Connection, produced and brought to you by Good Patriot Realty, a salute to home ownership, and hosted by broker owner Stephen Thayard. Hey, if you have any real estate related needs and you want any help related to real estate, give me a call. Stephen Thayard, 408-472-0817. Again, 408-472-0817. California DRE number 0170019. So we're going to get the show started. You know, I've been doing real estate now for about 15 years. And whenever I go to meet with people to talk about um, real estate, whether they're buying or selling, I always ask the question, what is the most important thing for you in a real estate transaction? And I get all kinds of various answers, but it usually boils down to one or two things. They really want a good value for their dollar, um, whether when they're buying a home and when they're selling a home, they really want to get the most value out of the sale, meaning they want to get as much equity out. Then there's other ancillary things like I want to be close to work or I want to be in a good school district. Um, and then for um, sellers, they want a smooth transaction or they want a fast transaction, things to go really quickly so that they can get their money and move on. But a lot of times, which what does not come up in the conversation is the following. I want to be protected. All right. I want to be protected in the real estate transaction. And to me, that's kind of um, an interesting perspective and in that people don't bring that up. Real estate, especially in the state of California, runs at about a half a million dollars for every transaction all the way up to millions of dollars every single day. Every single day in, the, in California, escrows are closing, meaning transactions, real estate transactions are closing anywhere between a half a million to almost $2 million on average. And so there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of danger out there as it relates to either being protected from in the selling process from a buyer or being protected from a seller in the buying process. So in this next two part series, we are going to run down how to protect yourself in a real estate transaction. In the first part of this series, we're going to be looking at how to protect yourself from a seller perspective. So whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're not going to want to miss this because you're going to gain some insight if you're a buyer looking at to how a seller protects themselves. And if you're a seller, you're going to gain some insight as to how to look at things when a buyer is trying to protect themselves. But in the first of the two part series, we're going to kick it off with sellers. All right. So if you're a seller out there and you are, are you're listening to this, you might, you might want to grab a pencil and a piece of paper to take some notes, because I think this is going to be very informative. And if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and hit that like button and share it out to people that are uh, thinking about selling so that they can get this information. And um, also, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button uh, so that you don't have to miss any future content. If you're new to uh, the Real Estate Connection brought to you by Good Patriot Realty, a salute to home ownership, 
um, and you don't want to miss any more content, you can send me an email right now at info at realestateconnectionradio.com. That's info at realestateconnectionradio.com with your name and your email address, and I'd be happy to add you to my podcast distribution list. If you don't want to be on the podcast distribution list and you just want to go out and find the podcast out on the interwebs, you can find uh, uh, The Real Estate Connection on Apple Podcasts. Just look up The Real Estate Connection in the business section and you should find me very easily. Or if you want a more direct approach, just go to podbean.com. That's podbean.com, P-O-D-B-E-A-N dot com and look up the real estate connection and you'll be able to find me there subscribe on either one of those platforms and you'll get a notification every time a new show is uploaded so without any further ado we are going to move into how to protect yourself in a real estate transaction from a seller's perspective so what are the top three things that a seller would want to protect themselves in a real estate transaction, right? Number one, you're going to want to protect your equity. So in case you don't know what equity is, basic, it's basically the value above the value of your home that's above what you purchased it for. So for instance, if you purchased a home back to back in 1999 for 450,000, and now in the year 2021, that same home is worth a million two fifty. The difference between the four fifty and the million two fifty is your equity, and that's your profit on the sale. So you're gonna want to protect your equity, meaning get as get all of that out of the house and convert it into real dollars. That's very important in selling a home. You want to make sure you get all of that money. And then what's number two? You're gonna want to protect the transaction itself. Once you receive an offer and you're fine with the details of that offer and you agree to come to terms with the buyer, you're going to want to protect the transaction as it moves through the escrow process so it doesn't fall apart because you're making plans based on the money you're receiving and moving on to your next destination and the buyer is making plans to move from where they're living currently, whether it's in a rental or another home that they own and into the house that they're purchasing. So there's a lot of moving parts and there's a, a lot of third parties that are involved that are being scheduled and money being spent in order for these moves to happen. So you want to protect the transaction so that actually it comes to a successful close. What's number three? You're going to want to protect yourself post transaction. Now you may be asking yourself, Stephen, what does that mean by protecting myself post transaction protecting yourself post transaction means after the deal is done there are no issues that are going to pop up to bite you in the backside later on and that's super duper important especially in a state like california that's very litigious and uh real estate is very emotional you can take a look at one of my past podcast episodes where i did a complete podcast on the emotionality of real estate and you'll understand what i'm saying so again you can find that podcast on apple podcast or podbean just look for the real estate connection on either one of those platforms or you can send me an email info at realestateconnectionradio.com that's info at realestateconnectionradio.com with your name and your email address and I'd be happy to send you a link to either one of those podcast platforms and you can peruse through the database and see where I spoke about how emotional residential real estate really is. So let's dig into a little bit protecting your equity in um, a real estate sales transaction for all your sellers. So how do you do that? How do you protect your equity? Well, there's a couple of different ways that we get that done when we're listing your property for sale in the beginning. One is the setup. You're going to want to set your house up to turn it into a product. So right now your house is a home. It's very comfy. It's very personal. It's a place where you go to feel safe and it reflects your personality. In order for you to convert your house into a product that's going to be um, attractive to a lot of different people, you need to transform your home 
from something personal to something impersonal, meaning you have to remove your personality out of the house and make it pers- make it be neutral so that everyone can see themselves living in it. The other thing that you need to do, especially in California, since real estate is so expensive, is you need to make your house look as large as you possibly can. Now, you may be saying to yourself, Stephen, how do I do that? My house is a fixed square footage. It may be 1,500 square feet, 1,700 square feet, 2,000 square feet. How do I make it look bigger? I'm not going to add any more square footage to the home. And you're absolutely correct. But we can make the home look bigger to the eye of the buyer. And how do you do that? You remove as many non-essential items from the house as possible before you put it on the market. So depersonalize it and removing non-essential items. Now, in the industry, we call that decluttering because we all have a habit of collecting things. Um, Even the most um, minimalist person living in a home still has a tendency to collect things that they like, that they're attracted to. So what we want to do is we clear off all the countertops, we remove all the knickknacks from the space. If you have lots of furniture in a room that's cramping its style, you remove that. So the key to this, in order for it to become emotionally palatable to you, is to think that, hey, I'm moving and I'm going to be packing and sending my stuff to a new location anyway. I might as well pre-pack now. That's the game plan. You pack everything up now, whether you do that using a storage facility, the space in your garage, or using those storage containers. Uh, Multiple companies are now providing them where the storage container gets dropped off at your house. You put your extra stuff in it. It gets picked up, taken back to a storage location. And then when you move to your new house, you call the storage company with that container and you say, hey, drop it off at this new address. So it, it, uh, it, uh, oh, come on, Stephen, you can do this. Think. <laughs> it kills two birds with one stone. That's what I was trying to say. You're getting it packed. You're clearing out space of your home so that you can make it look bigger than it already is. And you're also pre-moving. It's going to sit somewhere and then it'll be delivered to your next house. So we're not talking about a massive move all in one, in all one three-day event where movers show up and you pack up the whole house and then it's gone. You can pre-move ahead of time. And so that's part of protecting your equity. Okay, also home inspections. You want to have home inspections done before you put the house on the market. Why do you want to do that? You personally, as the seller, want to know what the issues are with your home before buyers come and look at it. It's like the old adage in law. You never ask a question in court that you don't already know the answer to. So what does that mean? You have the home inspected about a week and a half, two weeks before you put it on the market. That gives you a chance to reveal to review what the issues are, and then you can decide whether or not you want to address them or not. This way, when the buyer comes to look at the house, they not only have your disclosures that you're going to complete, but they have the inspections, and they can look at those uh, all of that information and make an informed decision before they write the offer. This prevents renegotiation during the transaction. If you do not have home inspections, what will happen is the buyer will offer a certain dollar amount and then ask to have inspections done. Then they will review the inspections before you do and they'll determine whether or not issues within those reports will want them to ask for a reduction in price to take care of repairs. This puts the buyer in the driver's seat and not you, the seller, protecting your equity, right? Because what this does is it puts a hedge of of protection around you, the seller, and puts you in the driver's seat. So how do all these things work together? Well, when you uh, declutter your home and depersonalize it, it makes it more attractive to more people. When more people want to buy your house, it creates competition. When you create competition, then people will fight each other 
to get into your home, which means they're going to try to outdo one, the other person as far as price is concerned. This puts you in at, a, at an advantage and gives you the upper hand and allows you to get more equity out of your home. Number two, if you, if you already know what the issues are with your house and you have taken care of them or you've adjusted your price point to know what to expect or the market's just so hot that you don't have to do anything, at least you know when you receive that offer, there will be no renegotiation because they've already seen all the issues. And then um, with uh, uh, a, a marketing, with marketing, right, you have all of that in your back pocket. And you've marketed the house to all to as many people as possible. And then once you declutter, you might be able to bring in other things such as staging to uh, put pops of color and to make the house really, really warm, even though it's really depersonalized. So that's the first piece. So if you have any questions about any of that and you want to talk about your specific situation, give me a call. Stephen Thayard host of the Real Estate Connection and broker owner of Good Patriot Realty, a salute to home ownership at 408-472-0817. Again, 408-472-0817. Okay, now, how do, how do you protect the transaction? Okay, so after all of that's been done and you receive the offer that you've been wanting, then a realtor, a realtor, sorry, realtor or broker representing you will protect the transaction. Now, in every real estate deal, there's always something that comes up that's a hiccup or a mountain to get over in order to close escrow. It either can relate to the lending side or it can relate to documentation. It can relate to all sorts of things. What your real estate um, a broker does to protect you as their principal is that we try to anticipate as many issues as possible. And based on our experience, we help you negotiate through things as they come up. We also advise you when the deal looks like it's not going to be coming together and when you should back out. And we also tell you when it's, um, when it's an issue that isn't something that you should die on a hill for, okay? So when it comes to smaller things like refrigerators, washers, and dryers, you say, hey, I wanna take my brand new refrigerator, but you just received an offer that's $50,000 over the asking price, and the buyer wants your refrigerator, and you're starting to say, no, I wanna keep it, and it might make the deal come apart, this is where a good real estate uh, uh, professional will come in and bring reality back into the mix and say, do you want to risk the $50,000 of extra cash for a $3,000 refrigerator, right? Do you want to risk the whole entire transaction because the real, real estate transactions are really emotional for a $3,000 refrigerator? So this is where we come in and make sure that emotions don't boil over where they shouldn't boil over and we keep cooler heads and then be a mediator between you and the buyer to make sure that the deal still gets done and everyone's happy. We're kind of like that duck that you see floating on the water. The duck seems really calm and just going along with no issues, but underneath the surface, his feet are moving really, really fast. To you as the seller, all you should see is calmness in the transaction, even though your professional is running a thousand miles an hour to try to keep the deals together so that you don't have to see any of the bad stuff that's going on. So at the end of the day, it seemed really, really smooth and seamless. So what's the last point? The last point is to protect the seller post transaction. How do you do that? That's in the disclosure process. When you are putting down disclosures, information about your house and say, we, me and Mr. and Mrs. Seller are having a meeting and you're saying, oh yeah, I had a leak in the roof about five years ago and uh, we painted the ceiling because there was a water stain and uh, we replaced the roof or we re repaired the roof. And then the disclosures ask you about any repairs and you didn't mention that. It's my duty to mention that because you told me. And why do I do that? Because it protects you. If later on that new owner goes into the attic and sees water stains on the wood up there and they say, hey, there was a leak in the house and maybe there's some mold that has grown in the insulation and they were unaware of that, of that, of that leak 
then they're going to come back to you and they're going to try to take you to court for any mold eradication that they have to pull out of that attic because you didn't let them know up front there was a past water leak, right? It protects you. The more information, the better, right? And so it's based on discovery. They may be in the house two or three years before they d discover that you didn't tell them something and they're going to come back and upset the apple cart and you will have moved on and spent all the money that you received in the proceeds from the sale. And then you're looking at potentially court or mediation. And you just don't want to be in that scenario. So the way we protect you post sale is that we advise you to report everything that you know about the house that has been an issue. Now, luckily, there are forms that ask you questions and those questions are very pointed and they cover all the bases. My advice that I give to all of the sellers that I work with is this. If you're reading one of those questions and a thought comes to your mind, I wonder if I should say anything about that. The answer is always yes. You have one shot before that deal closes to disclose everything. Once the deal's done, there's no going backwards. So we always want to disclose more, even if you think it's ridiculous, more than what you think you should. That way, if any issues pop up in the future, the buyer goes, oh man, I don't remember them telling me anything about that. And they pull up the disclosures because they're upset and they go, oh, there it is right there. You're covered, you're done. They can't take you to court, they can't sue you, nothing. You've covered yourself. Whether they remember that you told them or not is not your fault. You told them, you disclosed it, they signed, excuse me, they signed on the dotted line saying that they saw these, this information, they read it and they signed it and acknowledged it. Boom, case closed, you're out of court, no court cases ever happened. So this is how um, we protect you post-transaction. So just to reiterate, for a seller, we want to protect your equity, which is the amount of money you're pulling out of your house. Two, we want to protect the transaction as issues pop up and negotiate, negotiate back and forth between the buyer and the seller to make sure that the deal doesn't come apart. And then we want to protect you post-transaction so that there are no issues after the deal is done and nobody's coming back to you going, why didn't you tell me about this? So that's it. If you have any questions concerning your real estate, um, whether if you're thinking about selling in the near future and you want to talk about your specific issue, give me a call. Stephen Thayard, 408-472-0817. Again, 408-472-0817. Or you can send me an email at info at realestateconnectionradio.com or just, or just internet search Good Patriot Realty. A salute to home ownership. You can find my contact information there as well. So I'm going to leave you with this as we end the broadcast. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So with the God of creation with you, the one who created all things, gave us all life. If he's with you wherever you go, there's no reason to be afraid of anything. And with that, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of The Real Estate Connection. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless the United States of America. And we will see you all next week for part two of how to protect yourself in a real estate transaction. This one's for the buyers. See y'all later. This has been The Real Estate Connection with Realtor and Certified Probate and Real Estate Specialist Stephen Thayard. Licensed Cal BRE number 01700019. For more information on this program, visit realestateconnectionradio.com. To contact Stephen directly, call 408-472-0817 or email info at realestateconnectionradio.com. And be sure to tune in next week at this time for The Real Estate Connection.